Hello and welcome to the Big Bank Theory podcast. My name's John. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dan. Hello. Dan, it's been uh, the worst week. Pretty bad. Pretty stinking. Pretty bad week. Pretty stinking. I mean, honestly, I'm, I mean, I, I'd just like to hold my head up and say it's entirely my fault. Oh, List, yeah? li- well, listeners might recall I said these are totally winnable games. We'll definitely win them. What's the problem here? Yeah. We okay. could, well, I so imagine that's me. I was probably a bit more sceptical, was I? Yeah, right. sensibly so. Yeah. It's on me. So, Saturday, we went all the way to Blessed Cambridge and uh, lost 4 0. Those yep. brain boxes from Cambridge, uh, they gave us a university schooling in how to play football. Yeah, thumped. Beat us 4 0, thumped. And then last night, we went to the Sands Venue Stadium. Yeah. And despite their stupid name, they still beat us. Scunthorpe 3 1. That's seven goals conceded in two games, only one reply. What an absolute balls up. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> I mean, some good goals last night. Just. You know, just as an, as an aside, well, it's of absolutely no use to us. Most of them being, you know, that um, it was James Perch who scored the foot. He used to play for Newcastle, right? Yeah, That's I think the same so. Guy, yeah. I was like, hey, him. He's knocked us off our perch. I it didn't look like. I think it was a bit of a swinger. If you ask me, if you watch it back, that goal. Okay. He just sort of like, you know, that's if he's trying then, that's only going in the top corner one out. Of 50, you know. Well, that's just typical that we're in the game that it goes in, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, if you went to those two games, we were already taking both our... I'd, I'd already bought a new hat in order to take it off for you. Oh, You've, it can't have been fun, can it? Oh, my life. Yeah, and you definitely will have been thinking, well, it can't be as bad as Saturday. It yeah. almost was. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, and then all the I follow crowd got an extra tenner off of each of us for watching it. I've got to confess, it wasn't like it was a premonition, but I just decided I'd go out for a pizza instead. Really? <laughs> Spent my tenner on that. Yeah, wise move. Who, um, who knew? Terrible. Yeah. So Taylor, for the Cambridge match, Matt Taylor, was like, well, we were just naive and we chased the game too much. Yeah. So maybe the 4 nils not kind of entirely representative, but come on. So in that game, Atangana came in, right? Yep. For... Archie Collins. So the team, the team that started was uh, Maxted, Sweeney, Aaron Martin, Tom Parks, Atten Garner, William Sparks, Jake Taylor, um, and Law across the middle, and then Martin and Bowman up front. So pretty much the same, but with, with, as we have recently, both Atten Garner in there. Yeah, that's right. So that's similar so, to we've so, been playing. So nothing, cha- not much change. I'm not really sure why Atten Garner's being sort of seems to be being like really kind of rushed back. It not rushed back, but rushed in. You know, like yeah. I mean, we've been doing quite well. Yeah, I, I know on the that whole, Collins... And Collins, like... He made oh, a few mistakes, didn't he, in the home game against Forest Green? Yeah, but, I mean, but on the whole, I think he's been good. And he's, Absolutely. He's, um, and we... Why mess with something that's working, you know? Yeah, bit funny, that. I don't know. Anyway, I, not that I've got anything against Nigel. I think he's a good player, but it just seemed a bit... I don't know. He, it definitely doesn't seem quite first, you know, first team kind of starting kind of fit does he no he doesn't and no. you know in the forest green game he didn't look quite on the pace well um, exactly yeah he looks like and, and so pace. yeah i don't know why that justified now i was being generous on saturday evening i was like um well you know we'll have kept all the because people were saying where's matt jay he's been playing well in the other games the kind of cup competitions so i was thinking well you know we're saving him up for really good turnout at scunthorpe well, so the Scunthorpe team was entirely different. Yeah, so we've got, big, we've got five changes for that one. Five, is it? So it's Max did in goal, Parks, Moxie and Aaron Martin at the back, Atangana, Collins, Sparks, Richardson uh, and Jay across the middle and then Bowman and Seymour up front. Yeah. It looked, as soon as it, that, like they, the, the, that line-up kind of emerged, it looked... Didn't look right? ...to me. I mean, it just seems like it's too much... Too much change. Too much change. Gone, we've gone from like, you know, never changing anything to go like, right, we're now we're chucking all these players in at once. And like, you know, maybe sometimes that worked, but it just looked like there was no combinations working. These players have, have barely played enough minutes. So to put them all in at the same time and expect them all to gel, I think it's... Yeah. It's and, gonna, is that ever going to work? You know, I, mean, yeah. I know you've got to do, have things sometimes. These players have got to rest and, you know, like 
you get little knocks here and there. I know there was like uh, Sweeney and Williams both sort of had little knocks from the Cambridge game. Yeah. But just too many new new players in it. Not new, but like you know, too many changes at once and nothing seemed to be kind of clicking at all. And that's not true. You were clicking a lot to refresh your page to try and get iFollow to work. Yeah. Less said about that, the better. <laughs> um, yeah, it just it didn't... There was something about it that just seemed disjointed. I well, yeah, indeed. So they capitalised. So it was a an early goal, well, this kind of wonder goal, and then an early reply from Jay, but it didn't last, did it? And they, they took the winner again pretty quickly. And from then on, again, we were not producing the stuff. To well, we went in 2-1 down. Went in 2-1 down. I'd, afterwards, Matt Taylor was sort of saying he was quite pleased with the first half and saying we weren't far off where we needed to be. And it's like, that is not, how it seemed to me at all. It was turgid. And it seemed to be just like... Excellent word. It was just like hoofing it up to Bowman, who had like another off day. And the thing is about him is he, he's never going to... You can always praise him in a way because he isn't ever going to be someone who goes missing. He's always going to give his yeah. best. You know, he's always going to go 100% for you. But he has been... And he does pop up the old goal when we've needed him recently. He has scored, hasn't yeah. he? You know, but he misses so many chances. And like sometimes they're just like, oh, come on. Like, anyone could score that. Like absolute sitters. You know? And like, quite, I like, because we did create a few chances the first half. Sparks had a bit of success down the left-hand side. And um, so is the, here's the problem. Or here's the question. Is the problem a Jose? Like, did we it's think... unfortunate. Yeah. Did we hope for more? I mean, obviously, he's injured. But was that where we thought our goals might come from? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it seems like Bowman's always been the, the idea for main man. Okay. Because that's not, Jose didn't go, go out of the team because he got injured. He was dropped out of the team already and then he got injured. That's true. That's true. Um, he's just, I don't know. Yeah, well, Bowman should have had... I mean, I can think of three or four... Examples where they should have been, like those things should have been converted to goals. And there yeah. was another one last night, oh, right? Oh, yeah, of course. So, well, there's the, the least, there's two good chances at least, you know. I mean, that's why we, that's, I don't want to keep going on like this, but that's how we've got him and how he's not in the championship. But Well, of course. The yeah. easy one, like that Forest Green one was not an easy one. Um, so he can get the goal there, but then. Yeah. It's, that, that kind of thing's really frustrating. Well, I think isn't it? he just needs, it, looks, it seems like he needs a lot of chances to score, you know? Mm. Well, Stockley, we, of course, need, was the opposite. He'd go out, he'd, you wouldn't, nothing would be good from him except he'd get a goal most games. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're always talking but, about Stockley and it's. But he's. Um, gets my goat. He is the, you know, I don't know. I don't want to blame it all on Ryan Bowman, but. The other thing about last night's game, which stands out to me, is. Um, which no one is making a big deal about at all, really, is we had a goal disallowed. Mm. This is after Williams had come on, we sort of sent in the cavalry to like kind of you know try and rescue something. Um, we're already 3-1 down at this point. Williams sends a corner in. The, the, the Scunthorpe keeper is fouled by his own player. Yeah. As in, he goes for the ball, gets his hands on it, knocks into his own defender, and then Aaron Martin sort of just sort of, I think it's Aaron Martin just sort of, Gets it out of the line. Clips it in. Yeah. Um, from close range. And it's given free kick. And no goal. It's, and you, I was like, I'm not sure about that. And then they show, obviously they show the weird replay on iFollow where it's just the same, you know, there's yeah. only one camera, but they show a little slow-mo thing. And yeah, it's so clear. It's mm, so... It, like, ben Seymour's kind of about a foot and a half away, but nowhere near involved. And it's like, no one even really complains. Aaron Martin just turns around and runs back. and But that's... I know it was late on, but it wasn't like in injury time. And that would have made it 3-2. Yeah. It's, you know, I don't know. Ugh. Frustrating. Again, the refs are terrible, aren't they? The refs level. are terrible. They're really bad. But. Yeah. I, I, this season feels like it's been a bit of low standard across the board. So even when we were top of the league, it's oh, not it's like... it's been terrible. It's yeah. always terrible. And I don't just mean Exeter City. I mean the whole arrangement. Yeah. Um, now, of course, annoyingly... The team that's in form, not just fast approaching on Saturday, but that happens to be Blimmin' Argyle. So, yeah, I think there's a real lack of form now. City have only won one in six. That was that Forest Green game. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll come on to Argyle, won't we, I suppose? We but, will, um, we will. But we're looking, 
We're, I mean, you use the word turgid, fine word. Yeah. Um, slovenly, I would say. So off the bat, off those those last two games, which is you know what we're here to sort of cover. Yeah. Terrible. Well, and what's weird, Dan, is um, I'm not sure what can we take away from them that's good. We don't have to go there again. <laughs> oh, except we, we do. do have to go to Cambridge <laughs> again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Matt, yeah, Matt J from last night was. It was good. In a I, terrible performance, was really good. I tell you what I was expecting. He a couple of brilliant passes. This is reverse ball into Bowman, which is one of his big chances, which he missed. Yeah. Like, just missed the target. Lovely pass. Um, there's another one late on where he plays a kind of like half volley over the top. Bowman can't control it. You know, and he'd been through on goal. So yeah. Matt, he, and he just, and obviously scored the goal. He just got a lot of, I don't know, but I don't, I don't know what he's got to do to... I mean, on, on Saturday, I was expecting the lineup to be not Asangana, the normal, Collins and Sparks and whatnot, Taylor. Um, and I was expecting Jay to be in for Martin. Because Martin, I always kind of in praise of him because he like harries and hassles. But, you know, in a sense, I can't think of often when he, ca- he creates a chance or he scores a goal. No, and does he link up that well with Bowman? Yeah. He's certainly not like a kind of like. So Real he's a man of endeavour. No, no. He's a man of endeavour, but a little more. So I was expecting Jay, who's had tangible results in his, you know, the, the cup competitions and whatever. I thought, well, that'll be the obvious slot in. And then in the Scunthorpe game, we'll see um, use of Moxie and use of Richardson um, and Asangana maybe as a sub again, you know. So, like, yeah. Collins will be playing 60 minutes. The strange thing is about like, what you're saying is, that, I, mean, I guess that's kind of how Matt, he's sort of, that's sort of how he's gone about it. But I don't get this kind of treating this Scunthorpe game as if it's like the leasing.com trophy. No. It's another league game. It's just as important as the Argyle game. It's just as important as the Cambridge game. Yeah. So why use it as a, put basically sort of like a, the team was put out as if we were playing in yeah. a cup, yeah. which we're not bothered by. Yeah, you've got to spread those changes out, haven't you? Across the I two games, so. I would think the ov- the obvious thing to do would be Moxie as backup. Like, given that he, you know, given that he seems to have been dropped. Yeah, we that's what we thought. You think, yeah, okay, Sweeney's out, so Moxie steps in, fine, um, and then you know, if Williams is injured, what's the, I just don't get the J Bowman, Martin Law. I, I just don't get all that throw around. You're absolutely right. It, it doesn't make much sense to me. Yeah, I thought it was strange to not just spread out the changes, but also it's quite, I mean, it's what it is, is that he doesn't see Matt Jay as a striker, quite obviously. But Lee Martin's it, not a striker either, is he? No, but he still won't play Matt Jay in that position. No, no, so no he, right. it, Matt Jay only plays if it seems, or won't well, start if he's a replacement Direct replacement for Nicky Law. So it seems to be, oh, they can, un- they can only play one or the other. Yeah. And then obviously that changed a bit last night when Nicky Law came on. Yeah. Because he came on for Atangana. And obviously that we cha- then we changed the system a bit. But with the, with the system we're starting with, Matt Taylor wants one or the other in that position and sees them as players in the same position. Whereas I can't really see, yeah, why for that Cambridge game, you just swap in Jay for... Yeah. Lee Martin. Why he can play that? And they showed last night. Like I think that he can do that. He can. He was getting up. He was getting up as close to Bowman and combining with Bowman as much, if not more so, than Ben Seymour was, mm. who's supposed to be one playing the second striker. Not that Seymour had a bad game. I thought he at times looked good, but he's you know young and it's a big ask to do anything in that kind of game, isn't it? You know. But yeah, it's been Bowman that's been having the not the bad games. You're right because he's always full of effort and, and, and running, but there needs to be more option. In a sense, he's Bowman's untouchable. I don't think that's because they, you know, they think he's the world's greatest, but because he's deemed to be the only person that can play in that position. And that's the only sis, the system always works out with Bowman at the top. Like, yeah. And that's quite bizarre. And it really, it is we actually have got a player who seems to everybody else to be very similar. Why haven't we seen, for example... The Alex Fisher. Definitely Alex Fisher, but also a Martin and Jay combination or something. Well, that's like, because... Well, yeah, that would involve completely changing the way we play because at the moment, it's we just hoof it. Mm. We hit the defenders hoof it as far as far up the pitch as they can. 
Last night, that's all we were singing that first half, which Matt Taylor described as good, mm. was like a midfield completely bypass. It seemed so like the midfield weird. were there just to kind of like break, break up play, not for anything creative, and the attacks would come from Moxie and um, Aaron Martin and Tom Parks hoofing it up to Ryan Bowman. And then you compare that with the first 15 minutes, half an hour at For- when we played Forest Green at home, where the midfield was playing really nice, sensibly pacey football, coming from the midfield forward, having options around the edge of the box, the opposition's half and whatever. Yeah. There was no bypassing there. Like, I know you play differently away, but... Yeah, come working on. out to the wing. We're not playing Manchester City here. We're playing Scunthorpe. <laughs> yeah. It does seem strange. Yeah, it's odd. I don't know. I think they're all like... I think... Um, obviously, we haven't talked about Max Dead's kind of, you know terrible game at Cambridge yeah. off the back of like a really impressive kind of league debut um, you know at home a couple of weeks ago um, and then he just looks nervy I think now in the, since that in, the, in that game last week and in the Scunthorpe one last night he just only wants to hoof it and it comes anywhere near him he just wants to hoof it away like get the ball away from mm. me kind of thing and I know there's keepers who are like that but the defence seem like that as well sometimes. When things aren't going our way and they start getting nervous, Moxie and Aaron Martin especially just want to get rid of it. Just get rid of the ball. And I know that's not, like, sometimes that's the right thing to do anyway and you can't really go wrong. Yeah. But in terms of like overall and if we have any chance of actually winning the games, we need to be more confident than that. Yeah. <clears throat> and Moxie, of course, started the season so confident, so much like playing the dummies, playing the turns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, and we'll come on to this, this is a really big part of the season. Like, we're in this situation currently. It, what's happened, happened. We're still in the playoffs. What happens next is huge. Yeah, the annual slump. So, Argyle. Yeah, no, you know. Argyle. That's not. That's not. That's not be as reactionary as we, um, as I'm being, as we tend to be on this podcast. <laughs> you know, derbies are a different affair, aren't they? You know, yes. Or they say the form book goes out the window. They do say that. Um, what is the form book? Is that like a bookie thing? Yeah, it's just a book. I suppose everything used to be in a book, and including teams' form. Okay. And then form book. You throw it out the window because you don't need it. Because it's different. Because it's irrelevant in a derby. Got it. So That's what they say. Listeners, you might not be aware of this, but Exeter is a city in the southwest of England in a county called Devon. There's another city in Devon, so-called, doesn't have a cathedral, known as Plymouth. Yeah. Plymouth Argyle. Is it in Devon? <laughs> That's another question. If it is, how come all of Cornwall has PL as their postcode? That's a very good question. That's what I want to know. Um, it's somewhere down the end of the county. They wear green and claim that, that makes them more Devonshire than somewhere like Exeter. Yeah, we were wearing green first, lads. Hate to break it to you. That's true, we were. And uh, occasionally, the stars align and we play this team. Now, if I'm not wearing my biased head, um, it's just hard to get things done with it on. Um, we should say that Plymouth Argyle is quite a large football club historically. They've spent quite a lot of their history in the upper leagues of the English Football League system. However, at the moment, they're absolute tud. So they play in League Two alongside Exeter City. Also, their ground represents their form and is a pile of rubble. Also, they're disliked by anyone from Exeter. Plymouth Argyle, we play them on Saturday. Yeah, they're the worst. Ah, the absolute worst. And, you know, you can be all rational about it, but they just stink. I mean, you know, I mean, you can, you can have all those facts. Yeah, they've been in the championship in recent years. Yes, they've a massive, got a massive support. Of yes, Cornishmen. they've probably got more money and had more success for us over the year. But if you're thinking about, you know, who's tin pot and who's not, <laughs> tin pot you're and sponsored tin by not. a pasty and we're <laughs> sponsored by a lovely airline. <laughs> <laughs> We're flying I mean, into the recently, future. Recently, You're uh, still thinking re- about... Uh... Recently defunct airline, fine. <laughs> and I'm not going to say I haven't enjoyed a Ginsters. Actually, no, I, that's, no, no. I am going to say that. No I one have ever never enjoyed a Ginsters. Enjoyed a Ginsters no. I've eaten them because sometimes there's the only thing you can eat 
when you like have to get your tea from a garage on a long drive. I don't think anyone's ever enjoyed a Ginsters. It represents the worst sort of eating you can do, doesn't it? Which yeah, it's like I'm starving. I have to eat something. Yeah, I'm on this long journey, and I've got to get the only thing I can get is this disgusting. Ginster's pasty. Once, I remember years ago having one and bit into it. And it's like a sort of steak one or something. Yeah. And it was just like, I bit into a bit of this steak and it was like biting into a bouncy ball. You know what I mean? Like, it <laughs> just didn't move. It was horrible. Yeah, the uh, the now defunct range of Ginster's bouncy ball pasty. No, that was what they were passing off as legitimate meat. Gross. Anyway. Ginster's. I, I think Ginsters. that says more than any, you know, league table or stats or money or you know, volume of supporters can say. I think so. Let's not talk about when we've been sponsored by some absolute jokers. Um, Dan? We've never had anything that embarrassing, I don't think, have we? Mm, don't know. No, maybe not. Carling's, I mean, Carling, not Carling, that was ours. Ginsters is pretty bad, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, um, <coughs> that's who we're playing. They'll turn yeah. up in their green shirts. So the time has... The time has come. The time has come. We've been talking about it. We were hoping we'd be hitting the game in some sort of form. Instead, we're not. But that book of form is long gone. So, I don't know what to say, really. They're, well, they started badly, didn't they? New manager, Ryan Lowe. We've talked about it enough. Came from Bury. Bury, of course, cheated their way out of the league, basically. So, yeah. whether he's a good manager or not, the jury's out on. They yeah. just didn't pay any of their bills for a really long time and yeah. managed to with the money they didn't pay their bills with. Also, he's a knob, isn't he? <laughs> Maybe. He's um, a total, total dick. Brian Lowe. Why? Why so? Because he's all like... Oh, he just, he's just trying desperately to sort of just be like one of the lads, isn't he? He's like a bit of a Gareth Ainsworth. Jumping, around, Gareth Ainsworth, jumping around in a, like... CP company jacket or whatever or Stone Island like giving it the big one trying to be one of the like get in with all the sort of lads on the it's embarrassing he's a bit of a bargain basement Joey Barton isn't he without the oh, philosophy and, or aggro that is a damning indictment of any man <laughs> I think you're probably right that's, that's where he is um, I'd be embarrassed to have him as a manager and I, I mean I'd say this I don't think the Argyle fans are convinced by him yet I mean obviously he's done nothing and the conversations I hear are is he going to do anything obviously they picked up a bit and they thumped Leighton Orient last night 4-0 they're on a good little run aren't they they are on a good run so they've they've uh, unbeaten in the last five they've scored six goals without reply in the last two games yeah and let's be, and let's be honest despite who, how, however good he is as a manager their squad is Oh, it's the League One squad on the whole, isn't it? Yeah, they should. I know be. they've got a bunch of Berry players from last season, or whatever. Yeah, but, but those Berry players are League One players, aren't they? You know, like yeah, they... and also they got promoted out of League Two. So. Yeah, yeah. They so he's got that. They got. There's no standout player. I mean, weirdly, Joel Grant scored four. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I can't understand his he's, kind of. I don't know. He likes sort of. Well, when he trying was trying to wind people up on the internet, doesn't he? Does he? Yeah, trying to wind up. It seems like he's trying to wind up City fans, doesn't he? Did you see the little video he did of like no. the queue for buying for the tickets? No. The City game? Oh, Tell me more. I can't remember what it is. Oh. It's just like a little kind of, he's sort of going on, oh, look, there's a real club or something. I don't know. Really? It's a, it's a total dig, yeah. Ah. But I think, um, but I, I don't care. Like, we, I, we didn't care when you left, Joel. No, we didn't care. That's what I want to talk about. So he was all good with the tricks and he could get himself to the byline really well. And then he was absolute no content in the box. Like, I can think of... Yeah, I mean, we've had worse players. but Of it wasn't course like, we have. It was a bit like... Um, I was really surprised they bought him. It was just like, you know, I wasn't at all fast. I couldn't work out why that happened. Because they were League One at the time, right? That's two years ago he left. And... Was it two or three? Yeah, well, either way, they weren't in League Two at the time. No. That, that, I, I did not think he was worth a, a step up. Yeah. Anyway, he scored a few... Uh, but for us, he couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo. He's got four this season. Four this season, yeah. yeah well, that's less than Lee Martin. I know it is, but... I mean, he couldn't score any for us. I think he scored two in his entire time here. Was it that low? Oh, something like that. Yeah, it was that Ryan yeah. low. So, anyway, there we are. He's, they've got this other fe fellow whose name I can't say, McFadden, I guess, who, looking good, he scored plenty. McFadden? Not McFadden? Well, it's got a Z in it. Oh, right. Maybe I'm know. saying it wrong. Honestly, as soon as they start talking about Argyle on the radio, I just start singing really loudly. Yeah. So I've never known anything about them. Honestly, I've had to look them up. Turns out they're playing green. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's happening on Saturday. We've, I mean, this is the turning point in the season. We've done. It this, could be. It could be. Here's my here's my positive spin on things. Let's hear it. Let's, so let's say that that's true. That the form book goes out the window. Yeah, this for, this imaginary form book has gone out of an imaginary window. We've left it behind on Holden Hill. So what we're saying imaginary. is, yeah, it doesn't matter that they're on a good run. It doesn't matter that we're on a terrible run. Did I assume Darby's it was a car different. window? A bit like last season. Carry on. Like um, with the MK Dons game. Yeah, and that's the kind of that's what we need. We need to be up. We need to be like at that level of like. Yeah. Um. You know, occasion rising to the. We need to rise to this occasion, and if we do, I think that could probably that could spark a you know a turn in our Absolutely. fortunes. Absolutely. Right? If we get battered, yeah, it doesn't change anything. It makes things worse. If As we, in that perpetuates. I mean, it actually, sort of makes it. Yeah, it makes our bad run we're on even worse. Than yeah. it, obviously, and that, that. So on the one hand, it's it, it's a different kind of. The form was out the window. On the other hand, if we lose, it's very much not out the window. In fact, we've still got it, and it's looking. Terrible. We've had to reverse back up the dual. Ca- I'm assuming it's a car window. We've had right. to reverse up the dual carriageway. Um, bad idea. Bad, terrible idea. But you need to find the form book. Yeah, um, we've had to pick it up again. We've had to pick like, it up. Oh yeah, we are still losing. Yep, it's in a yep. puddle. Yeah. <laughs> we've put it on the radiator so that we can write in that we either lost or won. Well, I, don't, will, I, I don't think if we win, we're going back for that form book. Do you think so? No. You just buy a new one in paper. No, chips. if we win, then it's a whole new thing, and that's all irrelevant. We're off on a we've we've off on a new kind of ah. That's you know that will spark us on to you know reignite this kind of like we splashed out. I think we bought ourselves we can, a form tablet. I think we can then go on and like that pick ourselves up again. I think that would be a good turning point, and we could sort of start. We could get our confidence back. Yeah. And you could see how that would kind of like reinvigor the team into you know. Yeah. But if we lose, I think it's going to like compound it. Well, I'm worried if we lose, if we do anything except have a valiant draw. Yeah. If we do anything less than that. So um, to be honest, I, t- I think we'd all take a nil-nil draw at this time. Um, but it would have to be something good would have to happen in that draw. It just couldn't be absolute tud, could it? Like some good saves and good tackles, that kind of thing. Yeah. A denied penalty, that kind of thing. You know, we take that. And that, that would do enough. If we win the thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Look at us, we're back on it. We'd be pushing back up the league. That would knock our goal back down the league. So at the minute, we're sixth, they're eighth. Yeah. You know, that's a psychological line there, of course, around the playoffs. Um, and it, But if we lose, the thing we haven't heard yet is there'll be some bad feeling towards Taylor. Because I think you're right. I don't think he understood how we all viewed the Cambridge game. No. I think that will depend on the, on the manner of the, of the loss. If we lose... If we lose and it's like unlucky or close, yeah. I think it may be a bit too early for anyone to be like seriously yeah, criticising. Yeah. You'll get the odd one or two voices here and there, yeah. like you probably have already. But for any kind of real kind of criticism to come in, I think we'd have to really kind of not turn up for that game. And if that happens, as we as you know, as we kind of didn't last night, yeah. and as we definitely didn't get to Cambridge, if that happens, yeah, maybe you might start seeing people start to turn. Turn on him a bit. Hmm. Well, I don't want to see that happen. I think, you know, this is a bad do at the minute. Like, there's no doubt about it. We're involved in a lull. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, he's definitely got more he can give to the arrangement. Um, yeah. The problem is we never really recovered from the <clears throat> equivalent lull last year, did we? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Um, like, we picked up again and we obviously ended up... Yeah, the results Not too improved, far away, but we never, but we never really, like... we never, we never rediscovered that early season form, did we? No, we didn't. So that's going to be a real test, I think. Now, you know, what we all hope for is a absolute moxie screamer, and he dives into the big bank, and you know, his shirt's off, and his wife's crying, and you know, he he leaves the pitch wearing Grisha and the Lion's head. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Um. And, you know, I, Plymouth aren't... The Argyle fans aren't convinced by Ryan Lowe either. Obviously, well, these they, they, not forget, They've had some terrible results this season. They've had some season. terrible results. They've lost against some teams that, like, you know, been roundly beaten by a lot of, by a lot of teams that really shouldn't have been yeah. beating them. I think we're all on a bit of a psychological balance here, aren't they? You're right. They're, they're, in a <laughs> sense, their start of the season was the opposite of our start of the season. Very poor start. We had a very good start. 
Yeah. Now they've improved and they're in this positive um, kick on to get, you know, good, good five yeah, yeah, games. Yeah. It's a reversal of fortunes, it's, isn't it? It's a reversal of fortunes. And it's come around exactly the time we've got to play each other. Absolute is, nightmare. It's poetic. It's poetic, as long as it works out for us. Um, if it doesn't work out for us, it's the opposite of poetry. Depends who's writing the poem. Depends who's writing the poem. Is it Sir Francis Drake writing that poem? Or is it... I don't know who we got. <laughs> Are you putting Drake in with them? I suppose that's true. Um, yeah. Yeah, all right. He's a Plymouth boy. Is it Tommy Cooper? Is that the best we've got? Yeah, we, we're a bit lacking. a poet. Oh, well, we've got Coleridge then. Well, he's not really a local lad, is he? Yeah, Ottery. Really? Yeah. Oh, we'll have him then. We've got Coleridge. We win. We win. We win. Um, yeah, they got Tom Daly and we've got Joe Pavey. Yeah, or that swimmer kid. That's Tom Daly. No, no, he's a diver. Oh, yeah. The swimmer. I think you find Joel Grant's a diver. He. Thank you. The swimmer. I remember his name, you know. Oh, Lee Circum's cousin. Tancock. Yes, <laughs> Liam Tancock. Yeah, we've got him. They've got Tom Daly. God, I've not thought about him in a long time. Yeah. Um, we've got the Bishop of Exeter. They've got the Bishop of Plymouth. Have they even got a bishop? Yeah. No, um, we've got... <clears throat> we've got... Joss Stone. Uh, Joss Stone. They've got... Who? No one. That kid off Celebrity Big Brother. Was he on that? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Doesn't matter. We're writing the poem and it's great. It's an epic. It's not that poem that <laughs> Exeter City won from the start of the season. No, it's not. Um, Although that's, you know, I'm not slagging that off. Good, <laughs> sounds good like effort. you are. No, good effort. <laughs> good effort. I couldn't do any better. If you'd like to send us in a Coleridge poem. Coleridge could. Coleridge could. If you'd like to send us a poem in via Twitter or Facebook or email, we'd be happy to receive it. You can, of course, get in touch with us on Twitter at Big Bank Pod, on uh, email bigbankpod at gmail.com or on Facebook with the Big Bank Theory podcast um, thanks for all the positive messages we've had recently we love it we're really pleased that you choose to get in touch thanks for doing so um, I just as you all know I've gone on about it a lot I'm not at the game on Saturday no in fact I'm on a plane for the entire first half so when I turn my phone on at quarter past two please please everyone for the love of God Win the game. Yeah. Just stick an absolute hatful past him. I want to see that guy. In his, I want to see his Stone Island jacket muddy. I always find that interesting about hooligans. They wear very nice clothes for scrapping. Don't do that. You want to look good. Well, then you get mud on your nice jacket. And no one ever looks good fighting. It always looks bad. Um, so anyway, I please. think they want to look good in the pub before. Oh, I say good. I mean, it doesn't look good, if you ask me. They like, want to have that stuff on. You're all wearing the same clothes. It looks <laughs> stupid. Um, and, then, and then you want to have a bit of a tear up. And you don't really care but whether your clothes are getting muddy or not. Like when Ross's pocket gets ripped off in Friends. Yeah. Which is one of my favourite ever things that happened on telly. Um, so, yeah, well, come on. I mean, I'll be on yeah. the plane. I'll be on a... It's not even a flyby plane. No, it'll be Ryanair, wouldn't it? It's Aer Lingus. Oh, yeah, even better. <laughs> even more Irish. <laughs> I want to come off the Irish plane onto Irish soil and have some Devon victory. Yeah. Well, oh, it's final... both Devon. That doesn't work. Yeah. So there we go. Oh, and then, of course, it carries on. So here's the real problem. Well, this is my... My worry for the season going forward is... is, is is really I know we've been letting in goals yeah recently and that is a worry but I worry that like if you if you've got serious you know like thoughts of getting promoted that you need someone putting the ball in the back of the net can I paint you a picture look at you need like Richard Logan yes you need Jamie Curiton Stockley even if you're going to be a, if you're going to have a great a good season where you're seriously thinking about going up yeah you need someone yeah. Who's going to be, like, sticking the goals Let away. me paint you a picture. And I think we'd all be delighted if this were true. Matt Jay, given a significant run in the team as a second striker or as a, you know... Yeah, gets 15 attacking. goals in between now and 15 the goals, season. and then we flog him to Borussia Dortmund. 10 million. No one would begrudge him. He's been an absolute star in terms of endeavour and effort, and he keeps plugging away, and it's... I felt like I started out on something which is a scenario that is vaguely within the realms of possibility <laughs> and now he's going to Dortmund for 10 million which <laughs> to, to attack the yellow wall love it no but you know like he deserve all his mates are overtaking him it's a weird thing isn't it like he's been in and around the first team longer than all these youngsters and they've all overtaken him but actually 
he's been great. Like, he really has in loads of ways. Well, they keep calling on him and he keeps turning up. He does. So, I mean, what more can you do? He's just got to keep going like that. I'd love to see and, it. Um, what will happen is, as soon as he does get his chance, and he'll sort of like, you know, Taylor will finally go like, all right, fine, put him in. And then he won't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I, got, I got faith in him. Okay. So that's that. Here's the other thing to say, of course. Blimmin' FA Cup first round had been drawn against Cambridge United away. Oh, <laughs> I mean, let's hope we can just go and give them back what, you know, they give to us. But what a, what a nightmare. If you go to that, again, like triple hats off. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going well, to learn how to be a hat maker. Surely that's going to be a record low travelling attendance, oh, isn't it? F- what are the chances? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That, but there's high chance, low chance of it happening. So that's what we got. We also got Bradford, who are... Uh, Doing well and, and pushing for promotion and whatever over the next few weeks. So it's going to be an interesting time. Yes. OK, well, we'll see you on the other side then. We'll see you on the other side. I'll be over the sea. You'll be dancing in the streets. Tell me all about it. we Will do. Thanks for listening. This has been the Big Bank Theory podcast. My name's John. I've been here with my friend and colleague, Dan. Cheers. See you soon.